months, we're declaring this DEFCON 5. Where the hell is Soup? I am. Man, I don't even know where I am. Do you think he got pregnant? <laughs> what? You know, it's probably because he's got a full-time job, a social life, and unstable mental health. <laughs> Definitely not. Mm, no. Definitely pregnant. Nah, it ain't no way, bro. How is that anywhere near unreasonable? I mean, think about it. Yo, how would he even be pregnant? Like, he's got a dick. Anything's possible if you put your mind to it. Hey, you listen to me. Hey, listen to me. Hey, you listen to me. We've been trapped down here for months. Wherever Soup is, whatever he's doing. Guys, he's literally doing normal things with his life. I don't understand how you think- Nah. Lame. Let's think logically here. <laughs> There's not a single thing you say that I believe. Probably booking an ultrasound about now. <laughs> okay, everybody listen. Whatever Soup is doing, we must keep our fingers crossed that it is of the utmost importance. <coughs> we must hope that he's making a plan to save us and everything that he's doing is leading us to safety. <laughs> our lives depend on him. God, I love doing nothing for seven months straight except for teaching you guys how to not have sex. It's a good thing no one's life depends on me because this is quite the process. A horse and a dog cannot have babies, it's not biologically possible. Alright, Foskey, and please stop fucking the dog. <laughs> so, a good friend of mine actually has a dysfunction in his erectile area. So, what he'll do whenever we go to a party, just in case he hooks up with anybody, <laughs> he'll slip a couple of Viagra into his drink. Just a little confidence boost for the night. So, I go to kick it with the boys one evening. We're having a pool party and we're waiting for the women to show up. They said they were gonna be there in about two hours. But until then, it was just the boys. We had two hours of boys' time. I pour myself a beer and my buddy makes some kind of cocktail. So, I take a sip of his drink and it is one of the best things I've ever tasted in my life. I drink half the cup and a few minutes later I started getting incredibly hard so I'm sitting here with all the boys swimsuits on we're about to hop in the pool and I am more bricked up than a house in the 1800s so I turn over to my buddy and I ask him hey do you still put Viagra in your drink because like I felt bad I didn't want to use up his formula and he looks at me and goes soup that was just a cocktail <laughs> and I honestly probably should have called my doctor because that lasted for way more than four hours <laughs> What are y'all doing? What's going on? What call? Can you, what? What? What's going on? Ah, ah. <laughs> what the fuck? Look at the bong in all of its optifying beauty. Doesn't this just bring a tear to your eye, ladies and gentlemen? It's been a long time in the works. Please tell me that I have soul sand in at least one of these chests. Bingo! Ladies and gentlemen, we are prepping to fight the Ender Dragon today. In my 10 years of Minecraft experience, I have actually never fought in the Ender Dragon before. Have you ever been pulled up on stage by one of your favorite musical artists? When I was in high school, Joyner Lucas went on tour. And I could rap all of his fastest verses, I had to go to this concert. So Monday night night on a high school night. I roll up 12 deep to this concert. The concert starts, the openers do their thing, Joyner eventually comes on and starts ripping up the stage. This venue holds about 400 people and the entire place is jumping. There was old people in the back watching their kids jump in this concert and they started moshing too, which could have been a bar fight. I don't know. After a few songs, I have completely lost my voice. And his Mask Off remix starts playing. And right before he's about to rip this really fast verse, he asks who's interested to come do this verse with me. Now some guy on the other end of the venue gets pulled up on stage. And as soon as he gets pulled up, gets handed a microphone, he goes, I don't actually know this verse. <laughs> So he turns over and I swear to god this was something out of a movie. All of my friends were pointing directly at me and jumping. I make eye contact with this dude and I think, oh shit, this is actually happening. He points directly at me and I get hoisted up onto that stage like I'm going into the heavens gates. Now ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't until I got on stage that I realized the N word is said not once, not twice, but many more than two times during this verse. <laughs> I had to make a rash decision within five seconds as to what I was gonna do about that. I am in Minneapolis at a venue with 400 people. So Joyner starts ripping his verse and I start team tagging in and I try my best to distort the N word the most that I can every single time I said it. Don't mean to laugh hard, but are you funny to me? None of you half hard. And the crowd went absolutely stupid. <laughs> I am 
having the time of my life. My adrenaline is so high, I don't even care. After the performance, I get to hug my favorite rapper, and he says, Take care of him, give him a hoodie. So at the end of the concert, I walk up, I get a hoodie, I didn't even pick it out, I didn't care. And you will never guess what this hoodie says on it. From his most popular song, I'm not racist. I get a hoodie that says, I'm not racist on it. <laughs> This is not a joke. I was in Minneapolis. I could have been shot. The sunrise... That's going down. The sunfall is very beautiful tonight. It reminds me of missionary position. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that. That was the first thing that came to my mind when I saw the sunset. Speaking of missionary, do you guys ever think about how actually absurd it is that we commonly use the phrase, I want to fuck the shit out of you? Like, let's take it literally for a second. What if you were doing the dirty with somebody? Just to clarify, in missionary, and you just hear a and you look down right under where y'all are at, and you just see a six inch hog laying on a couch that I own. <laughs> Like, absolutely not. I'm never gonna be able to say this again. Like, imagine you push someone up against the wall, you lean over and you whisper, I wanna fuck the shit out of you. Like, if that's who you're intimate with, they're absolutely okay with it. They're totally into it. I want to make love to you until you defecate on my furniture. I want to sproink you until you Taco Bell on my Davenport. I want to impregnate you while you shit on my couch. Like, literally, it's the most disgusting terminology, and I never noticed it until now. I've been overusing it. There. I am glad to have ruined that for you guys. Walter White ain't got shit on you, soup. I made that in 2020. I literally predicted Minecraft Breaking Bad, and we ain't gonna talk about that? Which, by the way, Minecraft Breaking Bad is the best side of TikTok that I've ever seen. It is literally my entire For You page. I bet you $500 I'm gonna open TikTok, and the first thing I will see is a Breaking Bad Minecraft meme. <laughs> <laughs> I love the internet so much. Jesse, I want to fuck the shit out of you. Mr. White, on the couch that I own, Jesse. <laughs> I need to take a break. <laughs> ah. The beautiful bong. A few years back, a friend of mine had some chicks over. Everyone smoking, having a great time. And out of nowhere, one of these women drops this very handsome, delectable bong. And it shatters all over the floor. Looks of disappointment flared across the room. And she felt so bad about it. She gave my boy some diabolical dome. Some slob. And I said, okay, I guess that's close to fair. So the next day, we went out and bought a brand new piece. And my homie still felt real bad about the old piece. And I felt bad. I wanted to make my homeboy feel a little better. So I grabbed this new $200 bomb and I threw it directly on the floor. I then immediately got down on my knees. <laughs> and then he beat the shit out of me. <laughs> I think it's time for another break already. Oh! Uh, time for another break. A fan reached out to me and asked, Soup, how do you talk to women? Any tips? Any advice? And I said, don't. We have assembled an entire inventory. We are officially ready. Time for another break. Believe it or not, I have lost my V card. Still haven't been able to find it, by the way. Most people lose it at their parents' house. Or if you're from the South, your cousin's house. Not me. I go the distance. I lost mine at a drive-in movie theater. So we're on a double date, right? And we take a minivan to this drive-in movie theater. We split the car right down the center with a blanket so we can't see each other. He starts doing stuff with his girl and I start doing stuff with mine. I have been waiting my whole life for this moment. So we start going at it and I'm starting to make realizations as we're doing this. Number one, the windows are still very accessible to all the cars around us. And there are kids running by this car to go to the concessions. I'm talking six or seven year old kids very easily could have just peeked in the window and seen my bare ass going at it. Missionary, by the way. Number two, we're parked next to cars everywhere around us. We had four people smashing in this car. It was obviously shaking, but I was a teenager living my best life. If I traumatize some kids, that's on them for looking. And it was awesome. We did it to the sounds of Wonder Woman on a huge projector with a light breeze coming in the windows. Are you 
you kidding me? And now, to this present day, signs have started going up all across my city. So and so for the county sheriff. As soon as I read the last name on this sign, I just about gagged from laughing so hard. It was my buddy's dad running for county sheriff. And the only thing that I could think of is if I get pulled over and the sheriff steps out of his vehicle, tries to give me a ticket, I'll say I fucked in your wife's minivan. <laughs> Is that diamond? What the hell is that? Yo, I fucking found it! I found the exact room! Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Son of a bitch! No, no, no! Okay. Now we need two. So it was a buddy of mine's 24th birthday. And it's a yearly tradition. A birthday. It, it <laughs> Oh, y'all thought that was funny too, huh? So we ordered a keg for this pool party. And it got wild. People jumping in the pool. I flirted with a trans person. Almost got in a fist fight with a hick. It was great. We had started drinking around 5 o'clock. And 3 in the morning comes around. And I realized, oh, yeah, there's no way I'm driving tonight. So I called my buddy up who lived in the area. I fill up three red solo cups of beer for the road. <laughs> so I drink my last three beers of the night. And I get back to my buddy's place. Now, this is like childhood friend type beat. Like when we used to get home from school. School, she would always go, how is school, dear? So we get there about 4.30, and as soon as I sit down on the couch and the lights go out, I immediately start spinning. I am so gone that I run to the utility sink, puke in the sink, and then I turned on the water to clean it up. However, the water wasn't reaching the rest of this, so I had to find something to help me. So I grabbed the closest thing to assist me without thinking because I had about 20 beers. Paint roller! I don't know what in my mind thought it was a good idea to clean up puke with a paint roller. Now let me explain this to you. The main objective of a paint roller is to spread the paint everywhere. So as soon as I started cleaning it up, my puke spread everywhere across the entire sink. And after I saw what I did, I had no other choice but to go directly back to bed. And right as I was falling asleep, I could hear my homie's mom leaving to go to work. She teaches a summer school class. I wake up two hours later feeling like death, and I go up and start making myself something to eat. I make a sandwich, I'm eating pistachios, I'm making an absolute mess in this kitchen and then I fall asleep in a swastika position half on the couch half on the floor looking like hell puke on my shirt not to mention her paint roller and this woman comes home from work I haven't seen her in three years and as soon as she opened that door I woke up smiled and said how was school dear <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we finally have three eyes of enter. Only an hour long detour, not a big deal. I'm not mad. So I'm renting a property right now. Same house I've been living in for a couple of years at this point, but we're getting new siding and windows done at the time. And the people who are doing this job are just absolutely horrible. See the window guy, he goes into the house without knocking every morning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Son of a bitch! We're just gonna pretend that that didn't happen right there. This man has taken dumps in our toilet while the water was not working in our house. I've came home to a toilet bowl full of shit more than once. And I can't watch this guy. I have a full-time job. I'm at work. This man has left saw blades on our carpet. We have two animals. This man got drywall and dust coated on every single piece of my office equipment. So to say the least, so I went out and I bought some super glue. And since a professional worker should not be using your bathroom, as soon as he got to my house this day, I immediately put super glue on the toilet room. And then I left for work. <laughs> I come home 10 hours later and sure as shit, written in super glue and ass hair, it says, fuck you. Needless to say, nothing on the house got done that day. There's no better feeling in the world than gluing the enemy's ass cheek to your toilet seat. Your worst nightmare has arrived, you son of a bitch. Why is there five gravestones here? Oh, shit! I was thirsty. Coming down, baby. Got it, baby. Oh, pop that motherfucker right there. Okay, I think I got all of them. Oh, can you, can you go away, purple stuff? I'm kind of, kind of slacking here. Okay, we're making some progress here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's four of them. There's four of them. Oh, thank you. Ah! Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, baby. Oh, oh, we're so close. Come on. 
Oh shit, baby, let's go! Yes! No! Oh shit! <laughs> I was sitting right in the middle! Fuck! God damn it! <laughs> That is just my luck. That is the way to end this fucking series. What a better way to end it than the beginning, am I right? I think what makes this even better is I literally had a bed down there and I forgot to reset it as my spawn point, which just shows how bad I actually am at Minecraft. Okay, let's see if anything actually even saved. Ooh, I didn't all raise it that much. Let's go, baby. Oh, oh yes! Oh! And that's it, baby. The hardware store, the big bong, the OG bong, the cabin, this absolute monstrosity oh god i'm not getting emotional now that is you that is not me so i am gonna be very blunt with you guys i made a song about banging my best friend's mom it goes a little something like this i'm a motherfucking animal getting piggy from the back titties hanging low make a curtain I'm about to bust another load Like a laundry, but I ain't about to fold Oh no, suck it out my soul I'm proud of this, I ain't gon' keep it on the low I'm a stepdad now, used to be a bro Diamond on the hand with my dick, she hold like, whoa